welcome to Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks Incorporated, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. And now for our Bible study, here's our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the Friday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks so much for joining us today. I pray that your week has gone well. Right now, my Bible sits open to the book of Romans in chapter 3. Romans 3, if it's at all possible, reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God and join me there. Romans 3, I'll be reading verses 19 and 20 here in just a moment to begin our Bible study time as we come to uh, these last two verses that end a critical portion section here in the study in the book of Romans. So get your Bible along with that. Get something with which you can jot some notes. I think it will help you here today. As always, I have not only my Bible open, I have a gospel tract in my hand. And just in case you do not know what a gospel tract is, a gospel tract is a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. It's done in a format easy to carry with you in your purse, in your shirt pocket. I keep a pack of them in my back pocket, having them ready to extend the gospel to people with whom I do not have the opportunity to verbally communicate the gospel but I can give them the gospel through a gospel track. We'll see more about this particular track here in just a second. Let me prepare us for a Bible study time this way. I am not sure whether or not you've ever been in a courtroom during a rather serious trial. I'm sure you have seen television programs where courtroom scenes are on display, but frankly, I think you already know that real courtroom events and those seen on television, they, they tend to be worlds apart. Here in Romans chapter 3, we have been, in essence, in a courtroom. The Apostle Paul, being led and moved by the Spirit of God, has been the prosecuting attorney. The defendants are really two sets of people. One set are all the Jewish people. The other set are all the Gentile people. Now, in the days of the Apostle Paul, the prosecuting attorney, he would lay out his case. And once he was done, then the defendant or their attorney, then they would lay out the case in favor of the defendants. Now, what we are going to see today is this final defense phase of the court case. It's going to be as if the Holy Spirit anticipates what the defendants are going to say. The Gentiles, in essence, have heard the evidence against them, and they basically say, yes, we're guilty. But the Jews, the Jews are looking for an escape hatch. They're looking for that proverbial loophole in the law. And the Holy Spirit anticipates this and shuts it down, shuts down their not guilty plea with just making one sentence. Do you know what the sentence is? Well, get your Bible. I'll show you here in just a a moment. I mentioned the gospel tracks here. I have a sample packet of gospel tracks, one each of all of our English gospel tracks that I would like to give to you. And at the end of the program, my announcer will give our contact information. Please have pen and paper handy so you can jot down how to contact us. We would love to put that free sample packet with 40 different gospel tracks in it. We'd like to put that into your hand. The one in my hand right now is entitled, A Would Be Suicide. Suicide, a would be suicide. Now, listen to me, friend. To listen to me, Christian friend. Not only do all of our tracks give the gospel, but each one of our tracks will do a couple of things. This one will not only help you know 
what the gospel is, help you prepare to tell the gospel. But this gospel track will teach the power of young people and their lives on adults. We need to have that lesson. Not only that, this gospel track will show the power of little godly actions done through our lives, the impact they can have on others. And lastly, this gospel track will show that it's the plan of God to place us. You and I don't know it at the time, but God's going to place us in the path of people who need to hear the gospel. All that comes out clearly in this gospel tract. It's a track of a true testimony of a man who got saved because a teenager was put by God in the path. A would-be suicide. Powerful, powerful track. I want to give it to you. Please be ready when my announcer gives our contact information. If you can't stay to the end, please just go to our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Romans chapter 3, beginning at verse 19, the Bible says this, Now we know that whatsoever things the law saith, it saith to them that are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. We stop right there. Just like a thorough prosecutor, the Apostle Paul has been laying out the case for the guiltiness of all mankind here in the first three chapters of Romans. His case actually began at verse 18 of chapter 1, and his case is laid out, and he started with a, well, a rather broad rope, if you would put it that way. He lays out the case for the guiltiness of some really pagan people, but steadily, though, Paul has tightened the noose on the rope. He's dealt with moral people and he's dealt with religious people, but then he turns his focus on the Jewish people, those chosen people of God. And from the middle of chapter 2 on up through verse 8 of chapter 3, the case against the Jewish people uh, as sinners before God has been put on display. Finally, starting at verse 9 of chapter 3, Paul lumps all humanity together, Jew and Gentile alike, and he declares that they're all equally guilty. Now, all this, of course, is done under the inspiration, the moving of the Holy Spirit. Now, though, at verse 19 and 20, It's almost like the Jewish people have stood up in the courtroom to declare that they are not like those Gentiles. You can't lump us with them. It's almost like they stood up and said that. Notice the opening sentence of verse 19. It says this, Now we know that whatsoever things the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law. So let me ask you, my dear friend, who is? Who is under the authority of the law? Well, obviously, the Jewish people are. Now, remember, from verses 13 to 18, Paul has been quoting the law. He's been quoting the Old Testament. And here, the, in these verses, the word law, in verse 19 and so on, is reference to the broad entirety of the Old Testament and not just focused on the law of Moses. It's the whole Old Testament. If you've got that pen and paper handy there, jot down an outline. I've got a four-part outline. Let me quickly just rattle off the first three. They go like this. Any defense is useless. Notice the D word. Any defense is useless. Second point, any deeds are useless. Third point, any debate is useless. Defense, deeds, debate. Let's take them one at a time. Verse 19, any defense is useless. That's what he's saying here. We've just noticed that talking to the Jewish people, he's saying, you can't defend yourself. Verse 19 says that every mouth, including the mouth of every Jewish person, is stopped from their attempt to defend their innocence before God. The verse says that all the world is guilty, guilty, guilty. There's no defense. You are a sinner. I am a sinner. All the world is guilty. Verse 20 gives us point number two, any deeds are useless. Verse 20 says this, therefore, by the deeds of the law, 
There shall no flesh, that is, no person no, of any variety, no flesh be justified in God's sight. Now, right here is the trouble. We have, Here's the trouble of the whole matter. We're dealing with being right or being justified, being declared not guilty in God's eyes, not man's eyes. We're not comparing ourselves among ourselves. We're talking about standing before the judge of righteousness. All right. From verse 19, we found that any defense is useless. Here in verse 20, any deeds to be made innocent, declared innocent, are useless. Still in verse 20 is my third point. Any debate is useless. Verse 20 in the second half says this, for, or the idea of because, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Please notice that this verse does not say that by the law comes the righteousness from sin. All the law can do is show us how many ways we have broken God's law. The law kills, it condemns, but it cannot take our sins away. Much like the often used illustration, the x-ray machine, it can be turned on, it can have a picture of our internal organs, and there the doctor says, ah, there is that tumor. It's a large one. You are going to die in six months if this is not dealt with. The x-ray machine can show you the issue can show you the trouble, but the x-ray machine cannot take the tumor out of your body. The law will show us our sinfulness, but the law cannot take the sinfulness away. That brings us to point number four. Point number four, based upon really 19 and 20 together, is this concluding statement. The concluding statement, here it is, that all the world may become guilty before God. Now, what we've just read is a simple one-sentence synopsis of the previous 72 verses. By the pen of the Apostle Paul, the Holy Spirit has preached a powerful sermon in 72 verses, the sermon on sin. But like every good preacher, the Holy Spirit knows how to state his sermon premise in one sentence. The whole world is guilty. That's the premise. You and I live in a world of people who, for the most part, they, they will acknowledge that they're sinners, but they will debate how sinful they are. Some around us will own the fact that they're sinners, but they will stop short of believing that they are unfit for heaven. I have frequently said, and so have many others, that the hardest part in sharing the gospel with people is that getting the person lost in their sin, for them to see that they are dead in trespasses and sin. Years ago, I learned to use an illustration simply titled, Three Sins a Day. Most people will say that if they only sinned by a word, deed, or thought, if they only sinned in one of those areas just three times a day, that they would be really kind of like a walking saint. They'd be doing really good. But three sins a day done for 365 days in the year, that's over a thousand sins every year. Then multiply that number by your age and the number of your sins and my sins is huge. No earthly judge would dare excuse a criminal with that long a rap sheet. Well, neither will the holy judge of heaven. He won't excuse anyone who has broken his laws, but praise the Lord. The judge of all the earth has provided a way of escape from the penalty of our sin. But you got to take it on his terms, not yours. It's going to demand that you and I repent of our sin, turn away, and receive Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God in flesh. Receive his method of salvation, which is the shed blood of Calvary. If you've never received Jesus, do it right now. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. 
There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.